2023 sees the 50th anniversary of the commissioning of Carlisle Power Signal Box as part of the modernisation and electrification of the West Coast Main Line north of Weaver Junction. The electrification came into service in May 1974, but the resignalling at Carlisle had occurred over several years and was completed a year earlier. Carlisle PSB replaced manual signal boxes over the 72 miles from Burton and Holm in the south to Quintins Hill in the north. The first box to go, Southert, was replaced overnight 17th and 18th of February 1973. The PSB was open. Remaining boxes were replaced in stages until the 17th of June that year when the PSB was fully operational. The boxes in and close to Carlisle were decommissioned on the 3rd of June that year. Similar activity was underway with Preston PSB to the south and Motherwell PSB to the north. Most recently Motherwell PSB has been replaced itself by the West of Scotland Rail Operations Centre. The PSB, like Preston and Warrington, is based around a Westinghouse M3 Push Push NX panel with full relay interlocking. Originally built like Preston, Warrington and Motherwell with a flat roof, water ingress problems led to them all gaining a hipped roof in the mid-1980s. The boxes worked around the clock by shifts of three signalers and a shift manager. Lines also lead out to the Cumbrian coast with its fringe box at Wigton towards Newcastle with the fringe box at Corby Gates to the Settle Carlisle line with its fringe box at Howen Coast siding and the old Glasgow and South Western route to Dumfries and Kilmarnock with the fringe box at Dumfries. There's the branch to Windermere which apart from its two manned crossings at Burnside is unsignalled and worked as a one train in section under train staff regulations. As originally designed, the box would have controlled access to the Keswick branch, which closed completely in June 1972, and therefore was not needed. There were also the goods lines at Carlisle from Bog Junction to Coldew Junction. These were effectively closed beyond the metal box sidings at Rome Street Junction on 1st of May 1984, following the derailment of a runaway section of a freightliner train, which had split further south on the West Coast Main Line. The rear portion was diverted into the goods lines rather than being allowed to run into Citadel Station. It derailed, bringing down a bridge over the River Colju. The metal box sidings themselves were closed around 1990. Key traffic sources within the PSB area include the quarries at Shap Summit, Hardendale and Harrison sidings. There's an oil depot at Dalston receiving oil from Grangemouth. At Musband is the strategic source and destination for MOD Longtown. The PSB also controls access to and from Carlisle Yard. This was already much reduced in size in the 10 years between the yard opening and the opening of the PSB. The yard is controlled by DB Cargo for Network Rail. The panel itself is divided into three sections. At left is the section from north of Carnforth to north of Southett. This itself is split for convenience at Shap Summit into two 32 mile sections. North of Southwark to Coldew Junction is the middle section. That covers Carlisle Station. And then we've got Coldew Junction northwards, including the access to Carlisle Yard and Gretna Junction. Shift manager Brian Parker showed me the panel. Just to go off of Carnforth and to from Shap Summit. Here, yeah, just uh, we've bumped to the south. Of it. It's the station panel south that all the lines that radiated to Carlisle down to Coldew Junction. So it's Coldew Junction northwards into Scotland. Is right, um, he said it on an auto. We'd have been perhaps so happily sitting itself up and down all day. So you need to come on or off the branch. So he moves in and out the quarries or any regulated for freights that need to be done. Plus the, um, we get 
make a lot of, uh, I'd say, blockages for work by S and T or B way. Right. In the day or uh, yeah. possession work on a weekend. That okay. makes it uh, busy. So yeah. the moment it's all running, which is uh, which is good. Um, it's the right like, balance. Say again. It's the right balance. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, it's got on. Uh, you have to set the routes for just about every train on the station because there are very few automatic working facilities. Yeah. And the uh, North Family you're, you're now on the time for the um, crossing at Forest. Yes. It has your attention every time the train passes over. We've got that Scott yeah, Rail train approaching. Scott Rail train, in fact, we can tell the camera another way because it went in there. Start uh, immediately north of Carnforth Station. In fact, uh, if Preston Box set a, a route towards Carnforth, we can't see. Sorry, Carnforth towards um, the Philanders or Midland Railway. We can't tell what's happening. If they set the route onto the Dale Main, then this track to get is one of actually Preston's. It's just what's called shadow track to us, and we can tell immediately what's uh, approaching Preston Station. It just gives us that little extra uh, bit of time coming into uh, Oxford as to what's approaching. Yeah. Uh, and then from Burton and Home, um, got a long series of automatics to um, automatic signals to uh, Oxenholm. Right, so CR 83 is effectively signalling itself. Well, it, uh, yeah, it's all automatic. Uh, yeah. We do have some. Uh, he's got, got E for emergency replacement that uh, you can put back for um, pull up. It puts the signal in danger. Right. That uh, those signals, uh, these happily work, work themselves for most of the time. Yeah. Um, the only point of interest really is the uh, ground frame at Melthorpe for emergency working, signal really cool. working, yeah. uh, engineering work. Um, with the panel's magnetic, and it's got the appropriate uh, reminder of ice points clipped. Yeah. So that uh, uh, we've got no problem with if we uh, lose detection, we send the man out to just double check everything is uh, well. Uh, this little white light indicates that the points are detected and the ground frame is uh, always well. Uh, it's not puts the signals to danger, which is a good way. Yes. In fact, if you look at the panel, the channel equate 1 8 is like a half bar across. 16 has got the full bar across, which means it's an automatic. The channel equate 1 8 has got the, like a half bar, which indicates a semi automatic signal. So it's, right. most of the time it will work automatically. It's only when Something goes wrong. Well, no, if we give a release to the um, full ground frame operator. Oh, yeah. Of course. It's, uh, it goes as uh, a. But uh, bizarrely, E for emergency replacement are, are plated as um, automatic signals to driver. They, they cannot tell uh, where they are unless uh, you look at the diagram. Right. Interesting how you've still got the name place, names of places that signal boxes long gone. Long gone, yeah, well, it's, uh, it's a nice. It, the box is 50 years old, though, you know, it uh, just sort of. When people so, first moved in, they knew where they were. They knew exactly where they were. Uh, there's a, a lot of new names crept in, the Keyway and the SRT are a lot of uh, weird and wonderful names. Yeah, I've noticed that. Maybe it should be, but I'm not but. Uh, uh, in Caster, no significance nowadays, at junction downside, of course. Yeah. Uh, just yeah, this is Grey Rig. Yeah. Uh, up loop on the upside. Down the passenger loop on the, the, the downside. Put in for the advanced passenger train many, many years back. Yeah. As one of the few places where we can regulate it down passenger train legitimately. Oh, wow. the, most of the um, loops were, freight loops were put in. But now we've got on the down, we've got Oxenholm, we can regulate it for passenger train. Grey Rig. Um, Penrith on the down slow, as long as the train isn't required to call there. Yeah. Um, on the up, once the loop Carlisle, the next up past the loop is in Carnforth. Right. 62 miles. It's a long way. It's a long way, but um, north of Carlisle we've got uh, King Moore on the up. Yeah. 
and Quintzel up and yeah. down as a possibility. So it's, it, it's not quite um, spaced as I would. I think it would no, it's oddly spaced. Oddly spaced, yeah. yeah. Presumably Plumpton is. Plumpton's, is a, Plumpton's a good loop on good the loop. Yeah, everything else is a good place. T Bay uh, is the bi directional one. Yeah. T B loop, when the box came in, was just a, a down goods loop. Uh, with access to the engineer's yard, but uh, with all the improvements over the years, uh, they managed to make the loop bi directionals. Um, so you come on the up into the loop. So you could, uh, you could use it in one direction or the other, but not at the both, obviously, at the same time. Time, no. Um, you notice also there's two berths right. for two descriptions on the loop, which means it's permissive working, so you can, in fact, get two short frames. Two short frames, yeah. As long as they, uh, they will fit in or a couple of engines or something like right. that. I've got a slight fault at the moment. Uh, 633 points aren't working, so to show that. Colleagues will sort them out very, very shortly. Yeah. Yeah, if you just catch, uh, I'm just going off the XX way. Quick. That's the X marks the spot to the shaft summit. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and then we come back down here. Yeah. Yeah, this is the um, this is the peculiar uh, gap of the panel uh, to, to fit it all in basically because it's yeah. kind of long, distorted. It's 62 miles to right. uh, Carforth, but the panel switched nicely. It's 31 miles to Shapps of it and 31 miles uh, Shapps to Carforth. Right. Shapps of it gives access to the quarry with his. Um, no wires on the down loop, so we can't allow uh, electric locos in there. Right. Except for class ADAs, of course. And on the upside, um, you get it. there's two berths, so it's permissive working. There's also a little siding for uh, if we get any defective um, wagons right. um, detected by Harrison's hot, hot out of the box detector right. attached to there. We've got all sorts there of those engines. And, Tampers, I presume. Tamp well, you, you can get a tamper, but it, they prefer to use the downside for, oh, right. for access because it, it, otherwise it's a bit across the track to get Yeah, of course. That's uh, frowned upon the other. Then the next one's. Uh, yeah, the Shap Quarry or Hard Mill. And that's um, what was British Steel's yeah. uh, uh, jewel. Still um, two, three trains a week to Margam yeah. on traffic levels. No, I heard it's uh, why it got me damned. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it was uh, it's at once where a uh, train went, a uh, single line worker, the driver thought he was going through the crossover at Shap, and it was in fact Shap Quarry, so that's uh, not hard now, but it's still Shap Quarry on the panel, it's yeah. officially known as hard now. And then, and then down to Harrison's Loop, uh, which is access to, on the downside, to Harrison's. No, Sidings, yeah. immediately uh, north. Whereabouts is the hot box detector? Oh, the hot box detector yes. is oh, here. Yes. Right. Oh, right. And uh, when the alarm goes off, uh, it's a white light. It, uh, and uh -huh. it's the uh, printer which tells you exactly what the <laughs> axle is, temperature, speed, everything you need to know. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. There's more than one. She's not known. Major break in fact, over here. box, so it's really no longer around. All oh, uh, automatic, so once you replace with signals. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, I've seen it referred to as Little Strickland. Though. Little Strickland, yeah, that's basically but, uh, that's, what it is on the road map. <laughs> that's where the box would be. That was yes. We'd range it to one yeah. time. I'd say to give the. Uh, when we first moved in here, even though most of them are actually from the Carlisle area. Yeah. Um, Some of them might have worked for box. Oh yeah, and in times past today, it, it, yeah. it does give a good reference point. Uh, <coughs> um, thing. No. The, the next point of interest, yeah, Thruby Grange is, is there. Yeah. Uh, Great Strickland is the neutral section, which is the boundary between the electric control room at Crewe, which would control everything south of, and Cathcart, which control everything North, which right. Cathcart is uh, Glasgow, 
Uh, Alden Park area, if you Right. Well, in the Kafka Circle, I presume. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Kafka Bay. So, right. It is the wider. Oh, no, I should have done where Alden Park is better than that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, these are little CTLPs, crossing the line procedure. Um, sort of ticket a, a line block to just cross the houses for signal and take off or P way maintenance. Certain named individuals are allowed to uh, cross the line. Oh, right. Yeah. What's all about? Yeah. Uh, down to Clifton and Lyle Land, the ground frame. Yeah. Um, the two crossovers there still in use. Yeah. I'm surprised how far Clif Clifton and Lyle the ground frames are from. The end, well, in fact, where Clifton Station was. Yeah, yeah, they were out to do what the uh, logic was going on, but it uh, yeah. wasn't school at the time. Was you would have thought they would have put it where the old signal box had been. That would have been said, yeah. yeah but, uh, uh, must have been a reason. It must have been. Uh, unless it's tied up with the overlap for. Yeah. Um, in Valley Loop. Yeah. Again, this is our lowest upload, 2,952 feet. Right. You can see the two birds again for permission working. So yeah. Is, uh, no problem. So, it doesn't look as long when you're looking at it from the, from the bridge. Yeah, it's, it puts it on a curve, I think. Yeah. It, uh, trust me, it's... Uh, it's long. It's long. <laughs> you never have to look at the contents to check if I could show yeah. you there, because... Uh, if it's on the road, it will put it in by the Olympics. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, because the, uh, the um, have they increased the length of the trains up here yet? Oh yes, yeah, the bigger Tesco's trains are getting bigger and bigger. And yeah. The, um, intermodals are uh, quite all of them exceed the length of uh, most of the loops. Yeah. Which uh, might explain why you sometimes sat on a passenger train following one. But, uh, yeah. I've noticed that when they go into Carlisle, that uh, sometimes the tail ends at the... Yeah, oh, you, you, so if, if a, a long interval arrived in Carlisle, then really if it can shut the station because you can't actually access on or off. Yeah. So then we get to Penrith. Penrith. Yeah, this um, is an oddity. The, um, the Keswick branch was going to be uh, on the panel at Design, I understand. Which, yeah. Which is one of the crossovers that uh, I work from the panel but there's no actual signal routes onto them because this would have been formed part of the, the Keswick oh, see. Yeah. In fact, this is why there's a, a bizarre bit of permissive working uh, right. uh, from Penry South Junction, what would have been C and Q A and P number one to um to allow anything to stand clear once a Keswick branch uh, train came off but uh, right. um but nowadays it makes a nice long loop for yeah uh, for uh, intermodals or you know, or in times of um, using it on several occasions, if there's any um, problems with Carlisle, uh, you have to send trains at Penrith. Yeah. Yeah, because the platform 3 is very short. Yeah, it's, it's no use for passenger no, trains. No. No, not, not nowadays. It, uh, not even the 397 will fit. Uh, we have standard instructions not to. Uh, not to even try it. Not even try it. We did better first, didn't we? Well, we'll put it Yeah, we'll put it in there. Well, I've still not found Long Ashes Crossing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's there somewhere. Yeah, the, um, the users there are very good. Um, those comes are fantastic. For and just as we're going along, with Sierra 82 is following us. So, uh, <laughs> so again, on the part of the neutral section at Penrith. Yeah. And all these are automatic, you say? All automatic down to, to uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So you can see, if you're on the A6 still coming out of Penrith, you can see the signals all in a row. Yeah. Got yeah. And, uh, I I <coughs> if you stand on the bridge at Kitchen Hill, you can see, 
it's 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 straight. Yeah, it's it. It's, it's very straight. It's it. Uh, Pumped to the next loop on the F. Um, nice long loop. Not quite long enough for for some air into bottles, but uh, it's a good refuge for Eddie. Eddie had a can on. There used to be two uh, Mitzi Grand frames there, but uh, sadly uh, no longer with us. Yeah, all right. I'll just go to those at Plumpton again. Which crossing is this one? Uh, that's a former crossing, does it? Oh, right. Um, Laser bees. Oh, right. Yes, it's one going for him. Yep. Still the policy, you just to leave it on as a, as a reference program. Yeah. Then you get to Southwood. Southwood crossovers. Uh, Taken out of use uh, many years ago, but uh, so not exactly a Dynamo uh, arrangement of the panel. Yeah. And then, uh, revision. Let me get up to the rear. Rear. And that's the boundary to the uh, to the station panel. Right. And then this is where you get the Midland and the North Eastern. Yeah, bottom line's the North Eastern line to Corbegate, so. Sigma at Corby Gates has put a description in there, 2 November 2-9, indicating that it's uh, possibly a trading for Carlisle. Uh, group set now into platform 5 for it to come in. Uh, the line above is the Tower and Coast, mm -hmm. uh, scenic settling Carlisle 9. As we've seen, that's the line from Lancaster, Lancaster and Carlisle coming in next. Yeah. And then basically coming in from the west is the top line from Wigton to yeah. Miles Yeah, you see. Gives you, uh, it's, it's just, it's diagrammatic rather to fit it in there, rather oh, yeah. geographic to it. And then you've got your uh, occupation crossings. Yeah, there's um, this farmland um, between Dalston and Wigton, there's lots and lots of little crossings still in use. Uh, field to field crossings. Yeah. So that's like an enlargement of what, what it looks like on the ground, because otherwise it wouldn't fit to scale on the um, no. signalling puddle. So it, uh, and they're all presumably on phones, are they? They're all telephone direct to the signal box. Uh, Do they get used? Get used quite well. It's, it's variable. It depends on the um, department of hay timing. Yeah. Uh, if they've got any work on in the farm. Or, there's other times you can't sit, you don't need them for weeks and weeks and weeks. It's, yeah. Uh, it just uh, depends on what, uh, what work the farmer's doing. Right, so you've still got, where are we, where are we at now? To do the Dalston next thing. Yeah. Uh, Dalston and Mary Port Carlisle looks like a nice little station, but it's, it's quite busy still for oil trains. Three a day and usually three out. Because the, um, the sidings at Dalston only fit, um, you know, you get 600 ton tanks in at a time. So when the train comes off Grangemouth, it has to be split in Carlisle Yard into three portions. Yeah. Um, to get in, we have to give the shunters uh, a release which allows him to work the uh, ground frame to get the train in. Yeah. Um, sometimes we take the release back which allows these signals uh, to work as um, automatics. As soon as we've finished, uh, it comes out, uh, uses number one frame to cross from one side to the other, and then number two frame to, to run the loco around. Yeah. So it can take quite a lot of um, ground frame movements in and out to get to each. Uh, each tank train. Yeah. Does. Ideally, not when there's a passenger train. Not when train. there's a passenger train coming, but uh, they usually come at 3 o'clock in the morning, is the first run, and then yeah. they do uh, three runs during the day.
That's a transpenine. Is it? Like yeah. Like it's pentolina. Last right. Tuesday. Right, so we've done double stun. And you've got Carrick. Yeah, uh, uh, shops. Yeah. Um, sadly, I used down about to become a, um, a building site for numerous new homes. <laughs> but it's still uh, to get on the panel because it's part of the detection. It's still you know, ground for it's only about. 10 feet, I think, for a bit of track connected to it. Yeah. It's still maintained as uh, part of the detection. Um, sure, we some new homes will suit railway enthusiasts. <laughs> Former current yards on the other side, that's all overgrown sadly, but the, the goods are just still in around, uh, or part of them anyway, around Bob Junction. Yeah. Uh, up and down Newcastle goods to get to, towards the Newcastle and settling Carlisle line. Also, the up and down through goods to get access to and from. Um, yeah. And presumably that's going to get busy if locomotive services yeah. get there. Yeah, the depot, yeah. Uh, no, that's currently being rebuilt for locomotive services limited. So that's going to make uh, all use of the facilities. Yeah. Um, and then on the north eastern you've got the... Uh, you still yeah. got some of London Road. Yeah, on the up north east there's the remainder of London Road yard. It's basically on the um, into two sidings, I think, at the moment, and a run round. Yeah. Uh, opposite side is the former SO oil depot. Still maintained. Um, you know, the oil depot's out of use. The, the actual link is still maintained because it's, it's part of the turning route for yeah. steam locos and uh, right. track machines. It's a link along, you can't uh, get up to them. Right. The, uh, there's this little bit around here is the uh, up and down through siding which was the cord line that takes you around from um, London Road around Tilperby. Yeah. Uh, there's a little tiny siding, you want to get referred to ground prep, which used to be handy for keeping tampers in, but unfortunately tampers have, uh, have outgrown the siding. <laughs> just very little use, yeah. I don't know there's one there. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's just tucked away nice and you can get road access. And, yeah. Uh, People access without uh, seeing very long. I'd say it was handy, I'd say, but uh, unfortunately, modern tampers are, are too big now, so we have to serve outside the signal box. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's quite, quite a few sidings in among there, isn't there? Oh, yes, yeah, there's uh, the, the, the whole. This, this is what's known as upper warehouse sidings, but uh, again, there's very little. You, you get occasional um, on track plant there or yeah, I've seen oil grinders. And, Plant in there. Yeah, oh, it's, it's still. Although uh, the sleepers across the track seem to be, well, seem to be getting closer and closer. Absolutely, to the point. Not, not as maintained perhaps as. Uh, yeah. And then back at uh, Bog, you've got the stump of the. Yeah, the, when the box was designed, this would have gone around the, the back of the station as the uh, station of Audi line, but of course destroyed in the uh, runaway freight line collision of 1984. Yeah. Uh, Panic was returned, returned briefly for access to metal box sidings, but uh, uh, sadly, how you so actually this track uh, went to about 1990, I think. Yeah. Uh, it's easy just to leave uh, the oil yeah. pump. Right.
Now, South Junction has the oddity that you can't go from 4, 5 and 6 to the barrel port. Uh, or Bobby or Charlie is the, uh, is the other thing. No. You can basically <laughs> access from uh, 3, 2, 1 or the west side. It's yeah. the, the only real design defect in Carlisle Station, but uh, yeah. because there's just no room. I, I can't see any way that you could have done it basically without uh, a lot of space. Or, as long as you get used to that, there's no problem. It, uh, it was good to, when the place was designed, obviously the uh, good stranger would have avoided the station. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In the back from the cold room, so yeah, I, I can see why the, the original thought was there. Um, but what is the west sidings into um, become the Mary Port and Carl platform? Yeah. Three and four will be extended to allow HS2 trains, but uh, if it gets this far, if it gets this well, hopefully when it gets this far, yeah, it's more positive. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, it just surprises me that when they're doing the station redevelopment for the offices and whatever in the access, yeah, well, they're not putting the platform in now. Like, not <laughs> if that makes sense, we're not so this uh, one of the improvements put in after the closure of the goods lines is the down line is signalled in the up direction. So you can have a train running on the up, say on the platform four, and one coming off the goods lines onto platform right. three and one at the same time. Mm. Or you can come bi-directional, which is a bit yeah. here. Uh, gives a lot of flexibility at the north junction where there's, there's only a, basically a two-track bottleneck. Yeah. Yeah, I've, see, I've seen it used. It's, uh... Yeah, it's, uh, it's good. It's <coughs> one of the best things they've uh, put in. Uh, yeah. There's one of the other improvements that they put in at the time was the um, B and C, Bobby and Charlie Goods was uh, popular all the time. Yeah. They were track circuit because they were just sided at one time. They were right. Just uh, no tracks in. So to keep uh, a record of all engines and. That's just there. The goods lines would have originally come in around the back of the station. Uh, so it's only destroyed in. Is it first of May, was it? Uh, yeah, 1984. Yep. I've been reading the plaque in the uh, waiting room. Oh, yes, I've seen one there with the telly, yeah, he was yep. um, And you'll see, oddly enough, there's three birds here. There's permissive working on the goods line, which allows more than one train or locomotive to be in yeah. uh, section at a time. Uh, the driver won't get a red heel, get a PLS uh, British light signal to proceed at caution. Basically, rear. Same on the down, there's two birds to. Um, if you get something queuing to go on to uh, DRS's uh, diesel depot, that's, that's quite handy sometimes. Yeah. So, the length of modern trains, if you can look and pick that up, it's just how many feet you can get on that is the, uh, the vital. And DRS control their own depot, don't they? Yeah, DRS have uh, what's called a designated person who are uh, responsible for movements on and off and around the depot. Right. Uh, we contact the designated person uh, and he authorises stuff on or off uh, as required. Right. And um, uh, yeah, watch the uh, intermodals going through there. Yeah, the, uh, once you leave the goods lines, there's uh, three axes into the yard. There's the down, on the down, there's the, the down reception, which is basically the down storage area of the yard for the waiting relief for going north. Right. Up departures one and two, which are the bi-directional moves in and out for shunting moves, anything that requires work. And on the up, you'll get Charlie Cove 482, which is the um, upper voider. Uh, anything you'll avoid in the yard will come through there. Yeah. So basically, there's four moves in and out, but you can use three one way and three the other is the, yeah. the short way of describing. And then in the yard, it's DB that... DB are the... Uh, it's, not, it's a network yard, but uh, on, uh, contract uh, workers are basically all DB men. They work, there's like a little miniature panel, um, works UD1 signal, which is here, well, 1960 over here, yeah. in real life, but... Um, 
you've got built a one that uh, gives the yard I can give access to either bring a train at the yard or take out the longer provided up to Chalico for it too. Right. The train wants to come north out of the yard, uh, the driver leaves the yard, approaches what's called Delta Delta 1 stop board, will then contact the signalman, uh, tell him he's reported on where he's got likely wanted to go. Uh, signalman then, if you want the line is clear, puts the number into the train description of this box here, uh, gives permission to pass Delta Delta 1. Uh, the driver proceeds down to Teleco 506 and he's on the track circuit block area. Right. To go north. First level crossing the route's been set now for a train on the up. Uh, 2002, which is a Glasgow Carlisle uh, diversion, struck 221. If you look to your right, Liz, yeah. so he's trapped in at uh, approaching Gretna Green. All right. Um, yeah, originally this, this part from Gretna Green, we had uh, control down to Annan, which was a single track. This, would have, this signal here would have been Chalico 526 and it went to a single line here. Um, then the cool boom came along and the track was doubled, but the well then was really put back to double track. So we have a DE sounds Delta Echo 3103 is in fact Dumfries right. uh, signal. And then we found a, in fact, it's a bit of an unusual working arrangement. The uh, line between Gretna and Alan has worked on the track circuit block by um, Dumfries signal box. We then hand over to Alan, who then work an absolute block section to uh, Dumfries signal box. It's uh, right. It's a new it's so. And on the main, you've got to Quintinsel. Quintinsel, uh, famous of course as Britain's <laughs> most of a rail disaster. Um, set up at the moment to. Uh, automatic. Um, these little red knobs here that indicate there's an isolation, electrical isolation of the old red right. section. So not to root anything there without to check it. Yeah. And the little red overlays to the right indicate the start of where the um, isolation start. And that K E Y D Kilo Echo Yankee Delta is short. The way we can get into the uh, end code box at the signal is key to danger. There's like a every stop signal has a, a switch that you can uh, hand a bloke or anybody on the ground can um, key the signal to danger. Right. Well, keyed. Oh, right. And hmm. the bit I missed was Mossband. Mossband. Mossband coming up. Oh, you see the camera's just got on for. Um, yeah, as soon as 2002 passes um, 525 signal, the uh, red road lights are flashing. Red road lights are flashing, you yeah. see the barriers come down. Check that there's nothing there, nothing there. Crossing, push the crossing clear button. So you've manually got to do that? Yeah, every time there's a train comes over, you have to uh, check the crossing clear. Yeah. You'll see that the, the indication got out, Chalico 501 signal is cleared. So the driver 202, 501's at danger, 504's a single yellow. This signal here would have been double yellow, so 2002. Uh, we wouldn't have seen that double yellow because it would be coming around the corner, but as soon as it's, it's now got green signals all the way into, into Carlisle, basically. Yeah. Can we just turn the picture back on to you? Which is not a lot. This, um, this road at Floriston, it's sometimes very, very busy, especially at school times. Yeah. Well, the times you never know. Well, it's a Ratland to Gretna. It is, yeah. yeah it's no, I use it myself. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think most unusual with some people um, having uh, wedding photo pictures taken there, uh, <laughs> all sorts of uh, cameras. Uh, 
when they first did so they were, they were black and white. Yeah. Um, which always caused problems to um, people would ask if it was a car with a problem, what colour was it? Well, I can't tell because it was a, a grey one. But yeah. Uh, yeah. After so long, they, they can't switch off to yeah. uh, save life. But, uh, Yeah, because that's another long straight stretch. Because mm. off the uh, road bridge at Gretna Junction, you can see all the way to Pass Lawiston. Yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's a uh, good... <coughs> I had a falling of 1-0 at uh, Tyco 42 signal. Uh, right, I'll just contact the RS and see if it's okay to send you the North Pencil. Well, this, this gives access to long-term siding. Um, one time so important, they had, they had a, a separate access as well, a, a ground frame, a multi-ground frame, but uh, yeah. uh, no longer required. It's uh, been plain light out use, but it's still detected as, as it's gone to the original um, right. 1970s interlocking. So it's... Uh, Gone, but not forgotten. Which was, uh, yeah. Um, we ring long town to uh, get access to the uh, replacement. Uh, the railway controller gives uh, either yes or no to. Right. Boxes were all located in Weatherall, Low Mill, Forreston, and Low Mill. Um, switched off at the moment, but it's the last one that, of the original right. because the, um, the new equipment was at work, work on Bullhead Rail is why we used oh, right. So um, when the uh, Mary Port Calar Railway is re-railed, uh, this equipment will go onto the uh, new VDU equipment. Right. Um, six in use at the moment, plus hopefully uh, Low Mill on the Mary Port Calar line will come on here very shortly and fill up this. Um, any block. Um, you'll see that it shows that everything's okay. The last train, whatever it was, 2015, which would be 2002, maybe doing 98 miles an hour. Previous train would be a freight train, 74 miles an hour. Um, Goods lines a lot slower, falling the 1 0, last on the up, 10 9, we're doing 17 miles per hour. Um, is the one 86? These are all passenger trains 86, 83, 86. Uh, 10 on the down at South, 106, 110, 92. Um, Weatherall's the consistent one, the Nadal. Um, 60, yeah. 60 miles an hour for some uh, passenger trains. Wow. Uh, if um, little white lunar light illuminates on the panel. Uh, this flashes red as to which one it is. And the printout on the print underneath indicates exactly which axle, side, temperature, anything you could need to know. Yeah. On, and a reminder of what uh, questions asked the driver bizarrely. So. Right, let's turn it on. Uh, emergency block valves, you probably heard the yeah. uh, rest of one before. The modern standard is to use Emergency alarm, so you just pull or push as required, uh, and that is immediate, and you'll know it's reacting because it's very, very loud. Um, so that alerts the. Alerts an emergency of uh, whatever type. Yeah. That side, every signal that is capable of displaying a red aspect has a direct phone to the box, with an SPT, signal post telephone. See the numbers written on there. Yeah. In addition, there's also all the key locations like Moss Band, a separate one at Quinzel, um, Rio, oh, yeah. Kingmore, things like that. Every, every, yeah. every key telephone lights up as to where it is and who you're talking to. Right. I'd like to thank Brian Parker for arranging my visit and describing the panel to me. And also my thanks to Network Rail for allowing me access to film inside the PSB.